I'm Johnny, and it's time for Mastering. You are really gonna get it tonight, big boy. Uh... Oh, you ain't been had until you've been had by the chief. Oh, and before we get started, What's your safe word? NSFW! NSFW! So when I'm talking about mastering, I'm talking about that final bit of polish that you apply to a track when it's just about ready to be released. And I want to thank AAAM for giving me the idea of making this video. He really dug the last two, and we got to talking about mastering, and I thought, this is perfect. So thanks, man. Now, the important thing to remember is that if you're trying to use mastering to make your song sound louder, you've already lost the loudness wars. Well, okay, so you are going to be boosting some of the volume, but most of your increases should happen in the mixing stage, not the mastering stage. That said, we take no prisoners. And just to lay it all on the table, I am not an expert when it comes to mastering. I'm kind of a noob. Can you say bona fides? So this is kind of home, small studio mastering. Good if you're mastering your own stuff. Yeah, I know, carnal sin, shut up. And it's definitely not a replacement for a proper master from a proper mastering engineer from a proper mastering studio. Yeah, buts and caveats aside, let's get started. So when you're setting up your effects on the master track, there's one very important thing that you should do. Make it really easy to listen to both the wet, mastered signal and the dry, original signal and switch back and forth at the press of a button. Holy shit, that did something. And this is because you're gonna to wanna to switch back and forth to make sure that the changes that you make are not destructive and don't make your track sound worse instead of better, which believe me, you can do. So when you do this, do volume boost in your dry signal because there will be a difference in volume between the dry and the wet. And that difference in volume is gonna make you misperceive it as being better when it really isn't. You want the same apparent loudness so you can hear all the glitches and artifacts that you might be adding to the mastered version. And that's a real key here because our brains have the tendency to perceive something as louder as being more exciting. So I'm gonna give you a quick little recipe and it's got five basic steps. Hey, Laris. And the first thing that I like to do is I like to cut out any problematic resonances. Give it some real spiritual resonance. Feeling. Now what you're doing here is you take an EQ and you set up a notch and boost it as high as it can go and make it pretty narrow. And you're gonna sweep it across the track and you'll find those instances where frequencies really pop out and kind of how you in the ear. In those cases, you're gonna to wanna to cut those frequencies by anywhere between one and six dB. The trick here is to use your ears and not the spectrum analyzer. In fact, that's just generally good advice when it comes to mastering anyways. Like I'm not saying don't look at DOS blinking lights, but the important thing is to shut your damn eyes and use your damn ears. So the next EQ step is EQing for tone. Now this is not something I'm particularly good at or knowledgeable at, but the idea is, is that each track, each album, each studio, each mastering house has a certain tone. Some are darker, some are brighter. It's an opportunity to creatively shape the EQ of your track. Now I use a plugin called Luftkiss. Luftkiss? You never can tell with them Swedes. Yeah, yeah, can you believe it? Thing pokes that'll build a hospital for your cat up and smoke you in the next and serve you with lemon and capers too. And really here, just play around and experiment, figure out which sounds nice. Now the next three steps, all hail Discordia. I have one plugin in particular that really helps and that's the L6. Again, it's cross-platform, it's free, links down in the doobly-doo. So the first stage into L6 is a compressor and here you wanna use very light, very gentle compression. Anything bigger than two to one in your ratio is too much. Just keep it real gentle and real deep. Giggity. After that is the actual limiting. And this really depends on the kind of track you're building. If you're building an acid techno banger, you're gonna want some heavy duty limiting. But if it's the next Salvio in an epic ambient battle, well, you're gonna wanna limit your limiting. And the final stage after that that I use is a clipper. I know, I know, shock, clipping, it's so bad. But no, see the human ear won't recognize clipping in sections shorter than 10 milliseconds. Again, don't use the meters, use your ears. And in this case, it really should be nice and gentle, just touching ever so softly. Uh, sorry, I made it weird again. 
And let me reiterate here, watch the volume changes between your wet and your dry signals. Always be adjusting that dry signal so it sounds like it's the same. So that's my basic recipe. And the only other real piece of advice I have is if you walk into mastering having a general idea of what you want and the sound you want, then it'll make it easier as you go through the process. Have a reference track. Don't be afraid to give your ears a bit of a rest, either through the pink noise mix reset or even just go for a little walk. All right, so hopefully that helped. If you have any questions or even any suggestions to my process, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, Mastering is fun. The safe word is banana. banana.